name is Ann, and this is Toby. And we are a Toby Knits podcast where I bring to you all the yarny goodness I've been up to this week. Yeah, we're back to weekly. The last one was just so long. I, uh, when I realized I put you through like 40 minutes or something of me drabbling on about all my knitting and crochet and sewing projects, I thought I can't do that to you again. So we're back to weekly. I hope you don't mind. So Toby, you get down. Well, I tell everybody a welcome. Sorry, my hearing aid was falling out. <laughs> Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new, this podcast is all about my knitting, my crochet, my sewing, my, I have a little Etsy shop with some stitch markers and, uh, handmade bags for, uh, projects. And, um, yeah, I live in a little village outside of Ottawa, Ontario, very snowy and cold weather right now, originally from England. And apparently, uh, a lot of people were saying that they didn't think that they would, uh, you know, they needed to hear what I sounded like for real uh, when I speak with my Liverpool accent because, you know, I was a bit worried that you wouldn't really understand me because we tend to talk dead fast and we tend to do like sort of singy songy kind of thing, you know. It's not always what people can understand. So I thought it would be um, easier on you, like, you know, if I used my actual Canadian accent. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I had a request to use my accent and there you go. <laughs> I hope you could understand me. Um, most people can, but you know. I only usually talk like that to my dad, or actually to Toby. <laughs> and um, anybody that actually is from Liverpool. I have a friend who's from Liverpool, and as soon as I talk to her, it just switches, and then switches back. And then my husband will call me, and he can always tell if I've either talked to my dad or if I've talked to Kathy, because <laughs> apparently it's still there for a while. Anyway, I'm digressing, so... Um, if you uh, manage to get your way through this, let's hope much shorter video and you like it, please give me a thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so that you'll get lots more um, notifications of when I put up another video, just in case you don't want to miss it. So <clears throat> today I am going to talk, oh, I should tell you where you can find me. <laughs> you can find me on uh, Ravelry as Brit Hockey Mum. Long story. You can find me on Instagram as Toby Knits, on Facebook as Toby Knits, and on I have an Etsy store which is also Toby Knits. So, and Toby is trying to get on my lap. Ooh! Please excuse the ridiculous hair today. Um, because we're still in lockdown, it got extended again. So we are, um, yeah, I desperately need a haircut. My hair, it's like thick. And don't you love the little waves of white here though that I'm getting? I do. Look, look, I just love them. I kind of wish they'd be all over, you know, but no. <clears throat> um, so this is Toby's favorite position which is difficult when I'm knitting or crocheting. Or he loves to cuddles. Or the boy loves to, can you hear him whine in here? Toby, you love the cuddles? Yeah. Um, yeah, crumbs, I forgot what I was talking about now. I think it was my hair, but you know, we're not here to talk about hair. We're here to talk about knitting and crochet. So, finished objects. I only have one. I love that this chair has wheels. So I just got, can you just sit like on my lap? How's that? Okay. Uh, one finished object. 
and it is my um, January socks for the Rainbow Chronicles Knit Along. Yeah, I'm a little bit behind. And I have finished them and I love them. This is the Winter Bird Sock by Jules Hill, who is actually the lady running the Rainbow Sock Chronicles along with Kay from Lay Family Yarns. So this was her pattern and it's a toe up. And I've always kind of not enjoyed toe up that much, but I really did enjoy, I really did enjoy this pattern. And then of course the front of it is this lovely uh, pattern. They're supposed to look like birds flying, which I thought was funny, kind of cool. <clears throat> and then the back is plain on the sole of the foot because you don't want to be standing on the birds. And, and then we come up to this, the heel, and then the heel, look at this heel flap. Like, I don't even know how I did that. I mean, explain that to me. I think I just did the regular slip one knit one and then a row of pearl, but how did I get that? that I don't know. <laughs> but I really, really like it. And the funny thing is, it happened on them both. I mean, I think that's what the pattern called for, but I actually don't really understand the logic of how I did that. But, uh, and then of course the birds start again up here. Um, I like a short, like four inch leg. So um, you could go longer with this part, but I just prefer uh, a shorter leg myself. I get too hot otherwise. Um, but I love them. Really, really enjoyed making these. Loved the yarn. The yarn was a Canadian dyer. Um, whose name I forgot. This is my sock box. The dyer was Dorn Orchid in a Stellina sock base. 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, and the color was shooting starlight. There. <clears throat> so, and that's all my finished objects. Well, of course, apart from the million and a half Bernie Sanders dolls I'm crocheting, <sighs> they're all sitting here looking at me. So let's get on with works in progress. I have a new sock because you just you can't just knit a pair of socks. You just can't. Um, plus, I'm trying to do a sock, a pair of socks a month for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. And um, so, in my Netherwood bag are the February socks, and these are the color palette sock by. Laurel Knits, and I'll put a picture somewhere so you can see what they look like. They're very pretty, and I am using Kelly's yarn from Lay Family Yarns. This is her, she's actually knitting, knitting, she is making up um, the socks uh, yarn for each month. And because there are colors that we're supposed to sort of follow. So these are the February colors, which I actually don't know if they have a name, but I will show you what they all look like though. I kept them out of my bag here. I don't think they're individually named. I'm doing the um, colors in between the colors and the toes and heel and cuff in this plain heritage uh, white. I love heritage sock yarn. So uh, actually, I don't think it is white. I don't know what the name of this one is. Um, I think it's, oh, I've got the tag here. Hmm. 
one. Color 5618. So there you go. Um, uh, you can decide what color you think that might be, whether it's white, cream, beige, whatever. I don't know. This is as far as I've got. So um, isn't that scrumptious? So we just do, and I love this. I'm really into this. I, I don't know if they call it twisted rib or what they call it, but you knit into the back loop of the stitch and purl. So, and it really gives you this defined, look at that. I just love it for the rib, really defined. <clears throat> and then we do so many rows of um, just straight knits or stock and stitch if you're not doing it in the round. Um, so this is the color I'm using to start with. Very pretty pink with blotches. And then there are all these colors that, whoops, this one's unraveled, come after. So you kind of, that, and then there's this color, and then there's this color, and then there's this color. So <clears throat> that's going to be really pretty, I think, with the white interjecting in between. And if anybody knows me, <clears throat> I love white backgrounds. I love white to split up and break up and intersperse with my colors. Um, that's just my thing. So this pattern is phenomenal. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, I'm enjoying that. I'm trying to do, because normally socks are my car knitting. Um, and because we're not going out much in the car, <clears throat> I've been trying to do 20 minutes a day. So I only started them yesterday. Or when did I start them? <clears throat> I have a note book here that I keep all my notes in. I think I started it yesterday. Could have been the day before. Maybe it was the day before. I think it was the day before yesterday. What day would that be? What day is it today? Is it Saturday? No. Wednesday. It's Wednesday today. That means it's not the weekend. <laughs> when you're retired, every day is a Saturday. <clears throat> so, yes. So there's that. So that's um, my work in progress. Because, of course, there's the bears to talk about. Let's talk about the bears. So as you know, or maybe you don't know, I have just discovered amigurumi. If I say it quickly, I can get the word out. If I have to think about it, I mess it up. So now I'm going to mess it up because I'm thinking about it. So I really have gotten into amigurumi, and um, which is where the Bernies have all come in to play. Um, but I have done a few knitted toys before, and I've done a couple of crochet things years ago that were really rubbish but now I'm getting the hang of it and I'm actually starting to use cotton with my amigurumi instead of um, DK weight uh, acrylic yarn and it's making a big difference to me anyway um, number one I'm loving crocheting with the cotton and but I wanted to see the difference between a knitted toy, a bear, and a crochet toy, bear, um, which took me the longest, which I found the easiest to follow patterns wise is, is that a word? No. What I um, thought of the, the, the way it came out finished, the, the, the way the fabric looked, um and so on and both of these two patterns that i picked have clothes to go with these bears so again it wasn't just here's a bear you're done so anyway the two bears are candy bear by mary jane's tea room which i am making for my son who's a hiker and so I'm not making it like that particular picture of with the pink and all the girly stuff. This is going to be a little boy bear with a 
jacket on and a backpack and he's going to be going hiking. And I've even named him Hiker. And, um, and then the other bear is a polar bear. And this was from the Ami Along that amigurumi.com puts on monthly. And this was actually the December one. And I wanted to make it in December, but I didn't have the yarn. I had to order it. It took forever. And finally it arrived. So I'm making the bear and the bears for me because I just fell in love with this as soon as I saw it. Haven't given him a name yet, but um, he's actually Elia and Jin is the pattern by Joe and Joe Joe Handmade Designs. I'll put all the links, the names here, and then the links will be down um, in the description below. So let's get on with the first one. So we'll start with. <clears throat> we'll start with Candy Bear or Hiker. So um, I have to get all the bits out because there are many now. I'll explain, oh, sorry, this is the Bradshaw bag it's in, which is one of my bags, which has quilted bum. And it's a little bit um, bigger than the Netherwood, so it's uh, it's good, handy to put all this stuff in. Um, so he, this one actually surprised me immensely because it has knit up very quickly. I didn't expect it to, I thought the crochet would win, over the making up so so quickly just because um, crochet normally goes faster. I am using three millimeter um, double pointed needles and now that took a little bit of use getting used to because I used to make socks on DPMs but once I went to the magic loop method for socks I forgot how to handle a DPM. <laughs> So the first, and of course, when you're first casting on, and we started with the foot, you're casting on only like nine stitches. So you got three on each um, needle and uh, I was dropping them. I couldn't get my hands right. I, I put them on the needles and I thought, okay, what do I do now? Oh yeah, I need another needle. And uh, like, oh, it took me a while to get used to uh, holding the needles again. But I, I did. So here is, we started with a foot, then we did the other foot and leg, and then you do the body part here, and then you attach the legs, which kind of makes it look like they're little knickers now, <laughs> and then go up. And then these are his ears, which will, oh, well, where's the head? <laughs> kind of might be better if I had the head. Here's his head. Uh, I think it goes that way. I'm not really even sure how this is supposed to go on yet. And then these will be his ears, which I think are like that. I think, I don't know. So, and then these are his hands, which will go like that. Um, so I have really enjoyed this a lot. These didn't take five minutes to make. These were these zoomed off my needles. I think I made both of these in one evening, like they just zoomed off. And the ears were the same, they were very quick. And of course, uh, I've really enjoyed knitting this. Now, the reason I have not put him together is I am absolutely terrified of doing the eye sockets on the face, because his eyes are, I think they're like a French knot. They're not, um, the plastic inserted eyes, uh, which is really nice. Um, but, and then the muzzle and, and oh, I'm a bit nervous. I'm not the world's best when it comes to faces, but anyway, um, I need time to concentrate. So I haven't done that. Plus the other reason I have not put him together yet is I have to move over now to the polar bear. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at the legs and the feet and the way his whole and this little fat belly. And then here's his bum look and the tail. Look at the tail. The tail is stitched on as you're 
as you're going. So you start a boot, you do another boot, and then you bring it all together. Oh my goodness. And of course, this is his head. Look at this. So he'll come up here somewhere. And then his ears. Are these ears? Yeah, those are his ears. They'll be his ears. And then his arms are in here. Look at these arms. I haven't stuffed them yet, but look at these arms. And they even have like an elbow and everything. I don't know which way they're going to go, but anyway, they're going to be on him there too. Gosh, I keep moving it out of the shot so you can't see. And, uh, and then he has a neck. Oh yeah, that goes in there first. And then that's his neck. But I am absolutely loving it. I am using a cotton yarn. Um, I think it's called Katina. Catania from Schmeyer. Um, and I bought two of the white and ran out. This is the thing I don't like about amigurumi in that a lot of the amigurumi patterns um, they don't tell you how much you need they just tell you the color and because I'm still new to this and and I'm really unsure of what I need what I don't need um, I've, I've run out so I've had to order more yarn of course I ordered a shitload um, all different colors so rather than have the bear race ahead and be finished because again I'm trying to do these at the same time like one night I knit one night I crochet um, I decided not to do any more I'm uh, not to put the bear together uh, hiker bear not to put him together uh, until I can finish this off. There's not much more that I need to do to finish him. J he just has to come up a little bit maybe to there and then that's when I can put him together. So I'm not putting the, the other bear together until this one. I have the yarn for him. Look at this little feet. I love about the this yarn is it's very uh, sturdy. You cannot see through where it's stuffed, which I love. I'm using a 2.5 millimeter hook on this, and um, it's uh, it's holding the shape really, really well. I find. I don't know would it hold the shape that well if it was the acrylic because that's much softer. This is still soft. It's still lovely and soft. But um, anyway, this is my polar bear and I love him. So what I decided to do, therefore, was because they both have clothes, I thought I would move from the body parts to making the clothes for these little animals. So I have started on the jacket, which is I almost kind of think I might want this jacket myself but for the polar bear. It's a full length jacket um, with a hood. So this is the hood started. And it's going to, uh, so I'm guessing his little head, I mean, we're nowhere near done, but it'll go on him kind of like this, I guess. I still have more to go on the front and color, color, and his ears will stick out here. <laughs> I just think it's so cute. And this stitch is called, which looks terribly difficult, but it's the waistcoat, waistcoat stitch. And it's not difficult, but I am really loving working with this yarn, this lovely cotton. And um, I hope I'm going to have enough for the bear's jacket because it's really big. It's just so hard to figure out what you need. You know, uh, it doesn't really tell you. And then so I started um, the jacket for the hiker bear. Wait till you see this. 
It is by far the cutest little thing. Look at this jacket. It has to be, uh, what's the word? Um, steamed a little bit so it will lay flat. But look at this jacket. And it even will have a button on the back. It even has a button band look. We did a button hole somewhere. I don't know which side has the button hole, but that's the back and that's the front. Isn't this the cutest thing ever to go on my bear? I think so. And I made a sweater in two days. So there you go. That's how the bears are getting on. I love both equally. I was surprised how quickly the knitted one is making up. And um, loving, but I love, love, love the yarn for the crochet. I don't know if that would work well as a knitted to knit with that yarn. I, I, I don't know. I, I love what I'm using to knit with the, um, the knitted bear, Heikeberry. That was what yarn was that? Um, oh, where is it? In here? No. Where is it? Ah, yes. It is Cascade. I love Cascade yarn. Cascade two twenty superwash, which I think is a DK yarn. I'm not really sure. Um, so that's what I'm using for the bare body and the, the jacket that I, the little sweater that I made is in a fingering weight yarn, um, which just stuff I had in because you only need a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So that's how the bears are coming on. And last but not least, I have got some items to show you that I got in the mail. So I got my Crochet Society box and in here is stuffing. They always give you stuffing, which is good. And then these are the yarns. Oh, look at that. And these are a confectioner uh, DK. It's acrylic, acrylic yarn. And... These are by Bella Coco, who is the person behind the Crochet Society, if you didn't know. So we've got all these lovely yarns. Oh, and a hook. <laughs> and the hook is a 3.75 hook. And the hooks always match the box. And a peach and a light blue. So those are the colored yarns. We got a cloud pin, a rainbow stitch marker, eyes, a little book. I gotta put this yarn down. <clears throat> don't know me I love notebooks so this was just adorable just a little notebook um, and we also got a pattern book stickers if you don't know me I love stickers so these are what we got in the box now this was meant to be January's box or was it December's box I don't know I got it very late um the mail is terrible right now here anything coming my dad sent me something weeks ago still haven't got it like anything that's coming from the UK and this is where this stuff comes from it's just taken forever uh which is very sad but anyway it's also my last Crochet Society box because I've been getting it for nine or ten months. And while well, I've really loved it, 
um, <clears throat> I wanted to change. So I've actually got another one coming that is getting shipped at the end of this month. And that's a bi-monthly one. <clears throat> so it'll be a bit cheaper. Crochet again. Um, so this is the booklet that we get. And there are always three patterns inside to choose from. So pattern number one is this. Pattern number two is the little amigurumi um, cloud. And pattern number three is this pillow. And I'm going to do the pillow. And the reason I'm going to do the pillow is because <clears throat> um, back uh, when I first got this and did my first one, that's what the back of the pillow will look like. And I think, I don't know if you can tell, but the front of the pillow has clouds in it. Anyway, <clears throat> um, when I first, my very first one that I got, the pattern in it was a pillow. And I made it, loved it, still love it, and it's in our trailer. And my husband and I uh, got a new trailer last summer. Just a little one, it's not very big, it's 19 feet or something, it's not very big. Um, and it has a Murphy bed, so it's a couch that pulls down into a bed at night and because of the way the trailer at the end is it's kind of like a rounded end <clears throat> you can't lean back when you're laying in bed reading or watching the tv or any of that you can't there's no support for the back of your head um because you'd be like this so we've got our pillows and we stack them and then i've been using well actually we've been fighting over who gets to use the pillow that I made for the couch when it's a couch um, behind our head because that literally gives us the edge that we need that we can lay but still be sitting up kind of enough to read or watch TV and we've been fighting over this pillow <laughs> it's whoever gets in bed and gets the pillow first gets it and if you get out to go to the bathroom or make a cup of tea or something then the other person grabs it so um, I thought I'd better make one for Bob because my pillow's all flowers and pretties and stuff on it. And that one looked very much more a manly pillow, even though it's got pink in it. Um, but the colors will match perfectly with the other ones. So um, I thought it was a perfect way to start my subscription with a pillow and end my subscription with a pillow. Well, cushion, really, not a pillow. Um, so that's that. But when the new box comes, I'll be sure to show you that too. Um, and then um, the other thing I got, which is sort of new, I've had three of these now. This is the Sewers Club. And because I wanted to get more into sewing again, and I am loving this. So here is what we got. And this month we are going to make pot holders. Are they not the cutest things? It really is great. It's good for people that um, are getting back into sewing like me that have forgotten more things than they remember doing. So it's great to have, they have a video instruction showing you how to put it together and then you actually get a booklet with the information, or not a booklet, you get the instructions on the other side. So it tells you how much to cut, what to do, how to sew it. And there are so many things that like I learned to sew at school, we had actually needlework classes. And um, there were so many things I remember learning that now I've forgotten, even like a French seam. I forgot how to do a French seam, but I know I did it. We did embroidery anglais. I can't remember how I did that. Um, so many things. So it's kind of fun to get back into this and everything is sent to you. So you don't need to worry about any of it. And so this is the fabric I nearly said yarn then this is the fabric that they are sending and it's lovely fabric it's free spirit fabrics and this is called the spirit to create I love the way they give you the names on the bottom um, so this is this one which is very pretty I think that's a bird yeah I think it is a bird oh cool and then there's this one, which is flowers, obviously. And then this one, I guess, is our 
background. It doesn't say what that one is. This is our background, which is very pretty. Look at the way the light shines. You get, let's see what this is. It tells you in the box what it is. Um, cotton batting. So you get enough cotton batting. And then we have insula fleece. Never used that before. Oh yeah. Isn't that cool? So it'll be interesting to make this up uh, and use. Now, because I add, do the add-on, they have a little add-on each month and you get a couple of like little, and it's only like eight or ten, oh, $10 for the add-ons to add to your box. And I think the box is $19 or something, maybe 24, I don't remember. And then the little add-on. So the add-ons that we got in the February box where you always get the yarn to go with your project. So of course this is the pink and it's a really good yarn. It's the Goodman yarn. And then we got <laughs> heat resistant thimbles and there's three of them. I don't know why you'd need a heat resistant thimble, but anyway, I have them. I'll probably find out. And then they sent this which goes with the heat resistant thimbles and it is um, an iron rest, which I thought was very handy, very handy indeed. Cause I have a little ironing board, but by the time I rest my iron on it, there's like no room for the fabric. So this would be perfect cause I can rest this on my table in the heat rest. And then we got a sorted bobbin bundle. No idea what you do with these. If you know, please tell me, because I don't. But they're pretty. I have no idea. So that was what was in the Sewers Club for February. So I was very happy with that. And as soon as I have all my Bernies finished and out to their little homes, well, I'll stop picking that up because it's making a crackling noise, I shall be sewing. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed the little video. It's a little bit shorter than last time, thank goodness. I will be back next week. I don't imagine I'll have my yarn in time to finish the polar bear, but I'm sure I will have got further along in all the jackets and clothes. So we'll see how that goes. And I might have a crafty little cast on ready. Okay then, have a fabulous week. Stay warm, it's gonna be super cold this week and um, stay safe. Bye-bye.